How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting. Welcome back to Traumaville, aka Saint Maker, where I'm pretty sure we're at the finale, where we have Missing Face Girl. Turns out that she's somebody who used to be here and was like really young. We learned that the the nice nun that we've been interacting with was actually a young Adira, which is kind of fun. That I kind of I kind of figured that out like a few parts ago, uh, so it made a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, we're with Cornelia here in one of her good memories before things apparently go real off the rails. And Holly's got to figure out the fetch is going on and what the fetch we're going to do about it. Also, there's a slight chance Gabby was just accidentally murdered by Adira and that Adira is going to fix her, which is just, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. We're going to, we're just up here to have fun and traumatic experiences together. It's good to be back, everybody. I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, it's not still perfect. I'm still a little sniffly, probably cough here and there, especially as I'm using a lot of my voice for these videos, but worth every second of it. And uh, I'm guessing by next week, I'll be pretty much right as rain. And uh, then we got some stuff to do. I have some updates to give you all. And I also have a patron cast for the patrons. I need to get out because there's some stuff to do. I mean, I got to build my TSF model and I want to talk with with uh, this with the uh, patrons about reasons why I haven't been slacking a little bit. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but April is a good month over it all. I think I'm getting I'm getting answers to stuff. Um, I'm kind of putting my needs ahead of everything else and just making sure I'm going to be OK. Altogether, just good, healthy stuff. But let's talk about the insanity. It's about to be here. I also think we're about to learn more about Holly's past. Like I've got my theory. Because it, it kind of keeps playing with this idea of like a memory that she has that's wrong. And we know that her sister was accused of being sinful because she committed suicide. But I think what actually happened is that she didn't really commit suicide. They had their box hidden up on the roof, remember? And so I think either her sister went to get the box and Holly was there, but it wasn't supporting like the idea saying like, hey, we shouldn't do that right now. And because of that, her sister didn't have her right next to the window so that when she slipped, she just fell and like died. That's what I think happened. And so Holly like has like a guilt in her because she blames herself, but she also was too scared to, to say anything. But that meant that everyone just assumed that her sister committed suicide, which also tears her up because now, it feel, then ev now everyone feels like she's a sinner, which is part of why her mom and like her family unit is like kind of trying to pretend she was never there because in a highly religious household, it's a very traumatic like feeling that like a loved one like ended themselves because that implies that they are are damned and that's really crappy. So anyway, oh, we're off to a good start, huh? I have a feeling this video is not going to be monetized. <laughs> that's OK. All right, Cordelia, we've, we're watering the flowers. We're having fun before the the boot hits the ground. Drink up, flowers. Got your juice right here. Wow. They're all blooming. Nothing at all like how it is now. <laughs> that song. Oh, do you like it? Sister Adira taught it to me. Sometimes it gets too quiet here. And when that happens, every little noise sounds even louder. Noises that I hear at night. Yeah. She said that singing helps keep the silence away. And so whenever I'm scared and can't sleep, well, I can just distract myself with the nice little song. I, I see. Those drawings on her journal. Just thinking about what they might have been doing here. Um, hey Cornelia, that's your name, isn't it? Yep, that's me. Listen, I wanted to ask you. And this red one over here is Squiggly. Huh? There you go, Squiggly. Look at him, getting bigger every day. Uh, then Cornelia is clutching to this memory. She said this is like one of the few memories. She even said like this is the last happy memory. So she's really just wants to live in the moment. And that yellow one over there is Tulip. I know it's not really a Tulip, but she likes the name just fine. Oh, well, she looks great too. So you named all of these flowers? 
Yep, me and Sister Adira. How about that one over there? Oh, she's new. We never got the chance to name her. I know. Why don't you give her one? M me? Hmm. Caught tomato. Zyrene sounds pretty cool. How about Kylie? Hi, Kylie. How about Kylie? Kylie. I like that. Well, here you go, Kylie. Drink up. <laughs> you seem to really care for them. Of course. Sister Adira and I... We talk about what the flowers were up to when we weren't looking. Aww. I think that fairies live in the flowers. But the other nuns... They don't like fairies. Nah, they wouldn't, would they? But Sister Adira said that fairies are just angels. Tiny little angels. They dance around the garden, covered in bright colors. And other times, they play pranks on all the people we didn't like. <laughs> it... It was nice. Making up stories. Getting caught up in a little world of our own. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound nice. And... Very terribly familiar. The world we are, we'd share together, the worlds I tried to so hard to believe were real. Doesn't it does feel nice, doesn't it? Playing pretend. But right now Look, Cornelia, we need to stop this. Huh? Here Look, we go. I still don't really quite get what's happening, but I need you to stop doing this this pretend thing. <laughs> Alright, Holly, maybe you need to as well. All these things that you've been doing, going into my dreams, making those voices, and those... those statues. Adira, not your Adira, but the Adira I know. She... she thinks it's something bad. I didn't mean it. You know, I was just playing around. It was just so sad and boring here. And besides, those statues, that wasn't me. Oh, boy. What? What do you mean? She's like, oh, yeah, the statues. I had nothing to do with that. That's its own thing. They were worse things. Worse things? Like, like what? <laughs> I'm not, this is not going to be fun. I don't really know how to say it, but it's this place, this whole place, <sighs> it, it doesn't let us go, it just keeps us here, playing the same things over and over again. <gasps> what? Are you serious? What is that supposed to mean? I, I really don't know how else to say it it's like it grabs these memories or you could say souls but like based on what we've seen i'm not entirely sure this is like a a, a trapped like supposed to be a trapped spirit or a ghost i think it's an echo i think it's an imprint this place is like desperately clings to life and these echoes but when it does that those that are the thing what's left behind becomes a kind of a corrupt shadow of what it was. But this place it changed Adira. It changed her so much. I don't like it. I don't Hey. You're her friend too, right? Yeah. Huh? Um, friends with who? Uh, Adira. Oh. Um I don't think I'd call her friend, but... I guess... Sort of. I've been watching her. She's older and... She's different. But I know it's still her. I keep trying to tell her that she needs to leave. But no matter how hard I try, she never sees me. Hmm. Do you think she hates me? Does she? You never really mentioned her. Honestly, I don't really know. Um, I don't know. Between the two, I tell her the truth. But like, the thing is, like, I don't think Adira hates her. Like, 
based on what we saw when we found the journal that was like Cornelia, she was super freaked out. She's like, that's mine. Like, why do you have that? Like, she was so distraught. It's like what you said. Adira, she's... She's different now. Time passes and people change, you know? <laughs> do they ever change back? No. But they change into something new and better sometimes. Like a tree. A tree starts as a sapling. A cute little twig that has a little bit of flowers. And it grows into something big. Something large. But sometimes when it becomes its full grown self, it can be overbearing. It can get in the way. It can end up becoming intrusive in other areas. But with proper pruning and care, you can have a tree that can be its new form but also not cause issues with the surrounding vegetation and buildings. I don't know why I went with a tree. Maybe it's because there's a tree right here on the screen, but like, it, like, there's a lot of analogies for that that could work. I'm not really sure. I'd... I'd like her to see me again. Even just once. May. Thank you for talking to me. Yeah, I mean... I didn't really know what to make of you, but I'm glad you talked to me, too. It's been really hard. Being all alone. I bet. But I think you should leave. Get as far away as you can from this place. Hmm. And please, take Dira with you. Oh. This part again. Oh, boy. She was sad. Oh boy. Alright, buckle up, everyone. Sister Adira? Oh! Yes! Yes! Everything's fine. Just fine. Really? I can be pretty sharp, too, you know. You want me to get a glass? A glass? What are you talking about? For your tears. If we just let them fall, it'll be such a big waste. We gotta save them, so if I start feeling sick, they can heal me. That's kind of weird. Cornelia, that's... That's nice of you, but... It doesn't work like that. Look, Cornelia, those colored pencils I gave you. You said you'd only use them to draw on your notebook. I wanted to get back at them. <laughs> they don't see it like that. Listen, vandalizing holy paintings. It might seem like just a prank but now they're they're saying that the voices you hear are driving you to do these things oh boy the other girls here won't even talk to me you know they call me a witch and it's all because the sisters keep telling them lies about me so there's a vicious circle so she's sent to this convent right she's a child she has an active imagination a healthy imagination Granted, not everyone has such a bad manifestation of their imagination, but it's a healthy one. Because the sisters don't like anything that deviates at all, it makes her kind of a target for their anger, which they obviously have issues with. Like, they're very, very... Uh, they don't manage their emotions very well. And so it's, they kind of be ag are aggressive towards Cordelia, which isolates her more. And as she gets more isolated, she relies more on that powerful imagination because no one wants to be alone. So then she starts having more imaginary friends. You know, she tries to find that social life that she craves, but she can't have, which in turn makes the sisters more upset with her, feeling like she's doing something wrong. And so they keep suppressing that and telling stories about her, which makes Cornelia feel more isolated, which means she does it more. And it becomes this cycle. Like, without some compassion and understanding in there, like Adira's trying to give her, the cycle would only be broken in one of two ways. Either the sisters have to back down, or Cornelia has to back down. But why make a child back down? They just want what's best for you. The sisters, they hurt the other girls. I hear it at night. They take some of them out. I can hear their voices through the walls. That's not... It's all just 
like to make sure you've learned your lessons well. Oh, yeah, sure, because abuse is fine as long as it's justified by truth and wanting to make sure you're right, uh, you're, you're learning. You don't hit me. Why can't they be more like you then? I'm... I'm new here. I'm still learning. I'm... I'm, I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> this place is horrible. Stop pretending that it isn't. They're hurting you too. I see it. They do it all the time. And that's what sucks about these kind of situations, because especially for Adira, like you come to live in a place like a convent often, not always, but often because you feel like there's nothing else that you can do. Like either you'd have no, you're not sure where, what the, like a meaningful thing in your life, or maybe you feel like you've made mistakes that you need to like make up for, or you simply have nowhere else to go for someone to like, it might be like this or like, um, homelessness, right? Oftentimes people join a convent out of a social, spiritual, or physical, like back, being backed up against the wall, essentially. And so like Adira came here maybe saying like, look, I made some just mistakes. I, I don't really have family. I don't have anything else to go. I'd like to make a difference in the world. I want to help people. <coughs> Saw this convent. Maybe at first it looked really great. It looked like on the surface, like everything she could want. And now she lives here. She's like made a commitment to stay. But now she sees the dark side of it. And so now she has to try and justify it because she's made a commitment. If she breaks that commitment, it destroys everything she has connected to this community, which can extend pretty far if it's part of the greater church community. And so it could make her, you know, it could put her in a worse spot, spot than she was when she came in, if she leaves. And so she has this kind of, she has to try and decide what does she value more? Like their gut instincts telling her that there's things are going on that aren't right, or that terror that she'd have to face if she tries to confront them. And, you know, either suffering their wrath and just, you know, folding again anyway, or being forced to leave and being in a worse state than ever before. That's a terrible place. It's not really a choice you can make there. Like you kind of can, but like it's a it's a rock and a hard place by definition. And that like how do you choose between two terrible choices, right? And it doesn't help that she spent enough time here that a lot of like their mannerisms, their cultisms, their I don't want to call it brainwashing. Some people will. I don't think it's necessarily brainwashing, but I do think um, maybe mental conditioning. It's just a part of the process. That's what rituals are all about. It's about conditioning. It's about um, kind of teaching and building patterns and habits. She's already got that started. Once you've got that started, that can be hard to break away from. <laughs> That's why you're sad, right? They're hurting you. Uh, I'm no saint. I can barely manage being a good nun. Is... Is that why you're sad? No, it's not that. I'm fine, it's just... <laughs> I wanted to come here so badly. But here I am, just failing at everything. Yeah, uh, feels. That's too real. That is the summary of my experience recently trying to get back into school. I loved school. I loved going to college. I liked the learning. I liked feeling like I was expanding my horizons. And then I had to take a break from it for a while. And then I tried to go back. And I wanted to be there so badly. But I was literally failing at everything. <laughs> Mother Idolora. Now there's the real saint. <laughs> when I see her at work, it's like God himself is whispering into her ears. Just like all the stories... It's magical, really. And I try. I try so hard to be like her. But whenever I pray, I don't hear anything. It's just silence. Maybe they're all right. Maybe I do lack faith. Let's try it. Try what? Praying. Let's pray together. I... Okay. Put your hands together. 
and close your eyes. She's so cute. There you go. <sighs> Do you hear that? Hear what? No, it's just silence. It always is. Are you sure? Try harder. <sighs> there. The sound of the birds. And if you listen real close, there's the sound of us breathing. And if you listen closer, there's our heartbeat. It's not silent at all. <laughs> I, I... I suppose you're right. <laughs> you're sad that you're not a saint, but that's okay. I like you the way you are. Just you. And besides, I don't think I ever want you to be a saint. Because then you'll have healing tears and that means you'd have to cry all the time. And I don't want you to keep crying. Aww. <laughs> you silly, silly girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Oh, I wanted to give this to you. Made it when the others weren't looking. Do you like it? It's your own little rosary. Oh yeah, she does remember her. Whenever people hurt me or make me sad, Demi was always there for me to talk to. I know it's not the same, but I see some of the sisters talking to their rosary sometimes. So, maybe this can sort of be the same thing. Something to talk to whenever you're lonely. So yeah, like, I, we, like the assumption was when we first saw this that Adira got this from the saint, because she always was like, oh, the saint, the saint, the saint, but like, no, this is from Cornelia. Oh, oh thank you so much, Cornelia. <laughs> Try it on! I... You're not actually supposed to wear rosaries, dear. They aren't bracelets. Mother Idolora would... Oh. Um, well, but... Oh, would you look at that? I don't really think this counts as a rosary. Not enough beads for even a single mystery, so I suppose... That just makes it a nice little bracelet. And if anyone asks... Well, it can be our own little mystery. How's that? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that smile, it really does suit you. <gasps> oh no. There you are. The Mother Superior wants to see you. <gasps> Who? Come with me. It, it's happening right now? But she didn't, I was told. To listen to your superiors. Now come, help us. Hey! Stop! <sighs> you little bitch! She scratched me! Aren't they just lovely people? Lord Jesus, you know my burdens. I lay them all on your good shepherd's heart. <laughs> Hold still! I beseech you, and by the merits of the great, open wounds in your heart, and to heal the small wounds that are in mine. Wait! But... Adira, don't just stand there. Help us restrain her. Please, just... Just talk to her. Don't... Don't hurt her. Heal the pain of my memories, so that nothing that has happened to me will cause me to remain in pain and anguish, filled with anxiety. Are they, like, trying to do an exorcism or something? I don't know what this is. Let go of her! Please! I, I, was, I was trying to get through to her! To... Children, please, you'll scare away the birds. <sighs> oh my gosh, she's actually here. Laura. I saw two doves the other day. Imagine if they end up nesting here. Well, we'd wake up to their pretty little feathers falling from the sky. Just like angels. Forgive us, Mother. Forgive us. Forgive us. I am graced with your presence. <laughs> Violence is only ever the last resort. Let her go, and she will stay. <laughs> oh, fetch. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong button. So, last resort. Interesting that these, these nuns tend to turn to it as a first resort. Their leader tells them it's a last resort. They don't seem to be listening to that, despite their appearances. There now. Take it in. Good, good. Every breath is precious. A gift from God. 
Do not take such things for granted, child. Mother Idolora, please. Children her age, they have an overactive imagination. Our mother was speaking, Adira. All is right, Sister Annalyn. Please, find it in yourself to forgive Adira. You are family, after all. And family must love each other unconditionally. Yes, Mother. As for you, Sister Adira, I have given your concerns ample reflection. Cornelia, I have something very special for you, child. Oh, boy. Huh? I understand that you were upset that we confiscated your little toy. Adira has made its importance very clear. You're lucky to have her on your side. So, we came to a nice little compromise. Here you go. Good as new. Did they take the horn off? <laughs> yeah. They removed everything that made it not a horse. No! What? Damn me! What? What did you do to him? Why, I fixed it. A perfectly fine and normal horse. Beautiful, isn't she? As I feared. A proper thank you is in order, child. Mother Idolora herself fixed that. For you. What? No, that's not how... But... Do you not feel that? A crack upon a dam, a blot of ink on silk, a splinter in his grand design. Upon Cornelia, I see horrible... Horrible scars. What do you mean? I have no idea what to make about this. Oh, you can't see it, but they blemish your beautiful young face beyond all recognition. But worry not. You are in good hands. Just like what we did to your little toy. Oh, gosh. We can do the same to you. Oh, okay. So from an adult perspective, it sounds like, oh, look, like we took we took something that was like unnatural. We helped it become what it should be, its proper form. Sounds great in their eyes, right? To the child, they took her favorite toy. They removed everything that made it her toy and gave it back to her saying, look, it's fixed now and we're going to do the same to you. We'll make you new. Perfect. Mm -mm. Just like, um... I'd say, like, anytime you're being sold a cure or, or, or a product or anything, and they give you the, any phrases such as perfect or all working or the solution to all your problems or the perfect way to, to correct these issues. Mm-mm-mm. No, no, no. Adira. Yes, Mother? Your actions have not been in vain. Even in her broken state... I can sense the love she has for you. Now, let's put that love to good use. Oh, gosh. Mother, please, I... Tell her to calm down and trust us. Oh, gosh, the leveraging. Ah! Tell her that everything will be all right, as it will. Adira? Yeah, they should have just run. Adira. Oh, gosh. Now, now, I need to ask something of you. Something very important. I need you to go with them, okay? I... I don't want to go. Shh. It's fine. We all just want to help you. Oh, remember the stories? St. Mary, St. Rosa, St. Berna, they heard the calling. It's just like that. Remember what I told you? This place, there's a very special air to it. This is a holy place. Here, miracles happen. It's not too far off from magic now, is it? Just, just, just go with her and, and, and you'll be better. 
That's all, that's all we're trying to do here after all. <laughs> Helping you to become a proper child of God. A child worthy of becoming a saint. <laughs> Please, now, just do this for me, okay? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, just trust us. Trust me. Come now, Cornelia. We'll fix you right up. Oh, man. I... I should go with her. She needs someone to... You are young, Adira. And you are also strong. So strong. But I must ask you to stay. You have your duties to attend to. But... She is in good hands. We will do our best. Yes. Yes, Mother. Oh, boy. There now. That wasn't so hard now, was it? Take her to the room of hosts. Yes, Mother. Where... Where did they take you? C Cornelia? Where did you go? C Cornelia? <laughs> Dear. Hmm. Well, what now? I should follow them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wait! Don't just go with them! Fight! Run! Do something! Anything! She was a kid. <laughs> Cornelia! Cornelia, where are you? There's coming from over here. Oh, yeah! Trap doors! Trap doors are always great, pleasant things. Never gonna be horrifying, terrifying things going on there, huh? There. There's a door. <laughs> a secret passage. Looks like I ended up finding one after all. That's the worst kind. Amelia? Whoa, what the fetch is this place? Oh gosh. I don't like going in here. I bet. It's dark. It's scary. This is where they put us. The ones they can't fix for everyone else. They come out pure. Clean. Perfect. Right. Can't have a bad record if everyone who fails never actually leaves. But for the ones they don't like, we don't get to leave. I couldn't leave. I tried. But they wouldn't let me. I kept screaming. And screaming. But they wouldn't listen. They all just kept praying. They said they'd make me better. They told me there were bad things. Bad things inside me. That I was bad for having the bad things inside me. Why? Why were the bad things inside me? It was so hard to breathe and then after what seemed like forever it was easy so easy but you know what the worst part was oh gosh even then when i thought it was all finally over i still couldn't leave oh lovely Oh, yeah, this room's full of them. Oh, no. Cornelia. C Cornelia. She's here. The truth. Holly, are you here? Not here. Not here. Where is she? We found it. <gasps> Oh, Holly, 
Is that you? Oh, thank God. Dear. Oh, I feared the worst. I have been looking all over the convent. How did you even end up here? Tell her the truth. Cornelia took me here. Oh, quick. Let's leave this place. We can pray together and, and sort all this out in the chapel. Holly, come now. <laughs> Is something wrong, child? Holly, are you... Are you yourself? Remember the prayers? No, I, uh... We got, we got issues, dear. We gotta talk. It's okay, Adira. I'm... I'm me. Always have been. Just... What is this place? <sighs> this place? Well, it's nothing. Uh... Just a simple storage room. For things that we no longer use. For things you've tried to fix? Well, that's not... No. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I, I told you, it's, it's a storage room. An honest witness does not deceive. But a false witness pours out lies. Proverbs. What? What are you? For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest. Nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Luke. Ooh, ooh. Child, I, I need you to come with me this instant. You are getting worse. Oh, yeah, 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 worse. Because you're getting less holy by quoting scripture. Because, you know, that makes sense. Prayers. Prayers will block out the satanic voices that have been whispering into your Why? Ear. Why would satanic voices use scripture? That makes no sense. Not whispers. It was actually a very nice, casual conversation. But I guess, when you're not willing to listen, everything sounds like a whisper. Oh, Miss Beltran, just what are you on about? Cornelia. Boom! Does that name sound familiar? How do you know her name? She told me herself. What? No, the... That can't be. You two were friends. She trusted yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Don't yes, remember. yes. It's like, look, you named the flowers. I remember their names. She took me here, which is the last place you saw her go. She, she was ill. Very ill. Seeing things that weren't there. Hearing voices in her head. <laughs> Mother Idolora suspected the worst. Is that why she killed her? <gasps> How dare you! She did no such thing! Mother Idolora was saving her! Then what happened to her? She never left this room, did she? Her, her body was too weak, and the devil, he was too strong. Mother Idolora tried her best. Do you really believe that? Enough! You are not yourself, Holly. You need to leave this place and pray. We both need to leave this place and pray. We do need to leave, but we need to leave the building. Stop making excuses! She killed her! I saw it all! <laughs> noise. It's hard for me to think when you are making so much noise. Distractions. So many distractions. She would, she would never do such a thing. She told me so. We are all family. Perfect, loving sisters. And perfect, loving sisters never, never hurt each other. Interesting how conveniently they hurt you all the time. Oh dear, please, you need to listen to me. I have given my life to uphold the sanctity of this convent. I will not listen to such slander against my family. Adira? Uh-oh. Adira, where are you going? To a place where I can have silence. Don't just ignore what I said. Yeah, that's that good. Adira, please open up. Mm -hmm. Adira! 
She's not listening. Shaking. Is it really that cold or? Calm down, Holly. <laughs> you shouldn't have talked to a deer like that. It doesn't help. It never did. <sighs> Would have been better if you just stand there with your mouth shut? No. They're both terrible. I don't like these. <gasps> Does it really? Because I've never been happy with it. I'm not sorry. Deep breaths, Holly. Deep breaths. I don't really know what's going to happen, but you'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> a heartfelt secret. A spell key. And a little push. <laughs> I don't know, Holly. You literally got to look through the past and see stuff that Adira should never have been able to, like, you should never have been able to know. That's, you're really approaching some pretty fantastical stuff. That was never her strength. I just need to keep trying till someone hears me or till this door breaks down. Either way, I'll just keep making noise. Anything to keep the silence at bay. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh god. Adira, what's what are you doing? Cornelia. Did she was she really? I don't like that she's not lying. She how could she lie? She knew so much. Yes. Oh, dearest Heavenly Father, bless me with wisdom. Guide me so that my heart may see the truth. The truth. Yes. Mother Idolora, she was a saint. Mm. A true saint. Do you hear that? Somewhere in this convent is a safe and quiet place. It has clean white walls with paint that never peels. Heavenly castles with angels fluttering past stained glass windows. You just need to focus, Adira. Let your mind wander to a safe haven amongst the clouds. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. Yes. Yes, she is. But who could blame her, locked up in the dark like that? Someone should really help her out. It was me. I locked her up. Hey, oh, thank goodness. Oh, and her. I... I hit her. It wasn't my fault. I was trying to save Come her. on, Adira, look at the inconsistencies here. Oh... What now? What now? Find that silent space, Adira. Find that quiet space. Silence! Quiet silence. Distractions. So many distractions. I, I can't take it anymore. With the handprints of blood. Look what they've done to you. I, I've been so busy. I haven't been able to. <laughs> the blood. It's everywhere. Oh, no, 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 no. This won't do. This won't do. 
Out! Out, you filthy stains! Out! Oh! Uh-oh. It needed to be broken. No. no. She was supposed to watch over all the children. But, but now, all the time I spent. But, but I, I worked so hard. Hmm. Crap, I don't like either of these. You can still fix it, put it all back together. I don't think that's the right path, though. You did fail them. You did. Like, she needs to accept that. She needs to accept that things are not okay. I feel like she tries to fix it. She's just going to keep perpetuating the lie. That's right. I did, didn't I? All of it falling apart. The order really does end with me. I can't fix it. I can't put it back together. Putting things back together. Fixing things the way we want it. Is that her young self? We've been doing that for a long time, haven't we? <laughs> Holy crap. Holy crap! See, yeah, that's why I think this place doesn't hold on to spirit, it holds on to memories. That's how she can see herself. We learned how to do it. We learned it so well. <laughs> you, 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 you can't be. I, I, I'm seeing things. <laughs> Funny. So eager to believe in angels and saints. Yet the moment you see yourself, that's when the doubt starts creeping in. No. No. You're not real. You can't be. This is trippy. Maybe I'm not. It's hard to tell when you've lived most of your life in this place, this convent. There really is a special air to it, isn't there? Something almost magical. But there's one thing we both know was very real. Don't you remember? In this very room, we came here crying, begging Idolora to tell us what happened to her, to Cornelia. And she just looked at us with those calm eyes. Oh my gosh. Do you remember what she said? <laughs> no, no, stop it! Quiet! <laughs> listen, listen! You're a distraction! Just a distraction! <gasps> she said that there are some souls that not even God's light can reach. It's, that makes so little sense, though. Like, I've heard people, like, said that before, but, like, think about that statement for a second. You're saying that an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-understanding, all-creative being that created and knows an entire plan from beginning to end is incapable of helping people find the light? No, that's literally impossible by your own definitions. So that's an excuse. An excuse for maybe failings on the imperfect. It's kind of ironic how people who are, like, the more pious people become the more willing they are to decide that any failings on their part are God's will rather than just them being normal humans. And that was it. We never saw her again. No one ever spoke another word of her. No matter how many times you asked any mention of her name, met with silence. That makes you think, though, right? Like... Isn't there recently, like, like, in Canada, like, they were doing some, like, renovations and diggings around, like, these old Catholic, like, orphanages and schools and stuff, and they were finding, like, 
essentially mass unmarked graves of kids. Like this feels like a horror, like a horror game and such, but I'm pretty sure like as much as there's other stuff going on here, that the, the events that happened in this story, like to Cornelia are unfortunately probably a little too real. Like these kind of things really happened. And in the name of trying to be good people and trying to help other people become good, best, their best selves, people literally got killed. Like kids got killed. That's what's terrifying. And that's the stuff that makes me really hesitant about religion organizations as a whole. I don't think religion is bad. I don't even think that religion makes people cultish or, or evil. People find meaning and hope and love and compassion and drive and and desire to become a better person through religion. Those are all great. But then you take these good things and it can be twisted. It can be boiled out. It could be strained and 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 enforced. And you get these weird twistings that come up, especially unfortunately with those who are trying to become the most pious, the best and somehow want to become better than the average rabble. They want to have that superiority and they want it to come through faith. And and that, for some reason, leads them down these paths that can make it so that, like, well, in the eternal scheme of things, if souls really are in the hands of God and it doesn't matter, then life doesn't really all that matter that much, right? You know, when you die, it just means you're going back to God sooner, right? So as long as you die doing what's right and die in a place where you're going to be made the best you can be, then it's probably better for them to die, right? It's like, that. do you see how that reasoning kind of starts to go and it goes from somewhere wholesome very quickly to somewhere terrible? Like, it's that's the part that's really bad, is the fact that people use religion as a means to become better, but then at the same time, anything can be used incorrectly, like any tool, right? Like... Like, I use knives all the time to prepare food, but you can also use knives to kill people. Like, it's the same tool. It's how you use it. And you can use the tool that is religion, and you can apply it in such terrible ways. Like, history's full of it. And all religions do this. It's not just Christianity. It's not just, uh, it's, it's not Islam. It's not Hinduism. It's not, you know, freaking Roman pantheons and, like, the Viking, like, demigods and all of that all of them all of them were vehicles of good and bad it kind of all came down ultimately to the people like it always does that's not how it happened you are lying the, the child was sick mother Dolores said she was sick she, she was sick and she tried to heal her she didn't she didn't mean to yes that's the story we ended up telling ourselves. We had to. How else could we go on? <laughs> Returning to our everyday routine. Praying alongside all our other sisters. Oh, and singing too. What was it we were praying for again? We... 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 We were... Oh, surely you remember. A proper sister of Saint Idolora would of course know. <laughs> the grace of God. The, the good of the children. The good of the children. <laughs> it was unbearable. We couldn't leave our sacred vows. We can't ever leave. So we did the only thing we could do to make the pain go away. We forgot. We made sure we forgot. No. We cleaned the convent so well, didn't we? Our stuffed toy. That prayer journal she used to scribble on. Packed them all up. Stuffed them into boxes. Never to be seen again. That's what sucks about this. And it's actually hit me pretty hard. Like, it sounds silly, but, like, it's because this stuff is kind of... It's too real. Like, these things happened. Praying and cleaning and praying and cleaning. Till even the songs we used to sing to her faded from memory. Removing all the stains. Till every trace of her was gone. Well, 
almost every trace, but even the bracelet's broken now, isn't it? Did we keep the pieces? I... I tried to fix it. <laughs> fix it? Oh yes, we're very good at fixing things, aren't we? We fixed everything. Made everything so perfect. <laughs> Why shouldn't it be? Her world. It's Alora's world. Heaven on earth. We did it, didn't we? We behaved like the perfect little saint they always wanted us to be. We earned our place, but even with all that effort, we never really did fit in. We still never really belonged. Those divine voices that Idolora and all the other sisters claimed to hear, we never heard them. Isn't that interesting? So they called the little girl a demon for hearing voices, and yet they also claimed to hear voices, right? So it's not the fact that she was hearing voices, even though that's what they said it was. It's all about what the voices are telling you, right? That sounds fair. Though, I suppose it would be hard to hear anything when deep down, all we've ever really heard are the cries of that one little girl. No, 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 stop. Stop it. Dearest Mother Edelora, please wash my blood-stained hands. Tear off the lying flesh of my limbs. Shh. It's okay. It's okay. Sc sculpt my every action. We never really had a choice in the matter, did we? We needed to survive. And so survive we did. I don't like either of these. Poked with lies, tongue laced with venom. Don't listen to her, child. Your words, they are lies. Your uh, demonic apparition. Yes, that's what you are. You're still hearing her, aren't you? I hear her too, all the time. <laughs> For all her talk about perfection, mm. she was very good at leaving her mark on people, wasn't she? <laughs> Shut up! Not another word! We weren't able to save Cornelia. But please, Adira, now there are two girls right here, very much alive. We can stop it. Please. <laughs> but... <laughs> What can I do if I let them go after this? They will tell. Tell what? The truth? Then you can confess. All this time, that's all we've ever wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> but the Order's name. The Order's name is built on blood. How can that be okay? The Order's name is tainted from the beginning. You can't take such terrible things and build something beautiful from them. Not like this. Not from covering them up. You build better by being able to confront the past. By being able to admit the failings. And being able to confront it in a way that builds a sense of restitution. Not necessarily because you can never make up for it. But because pretending it didn't happen is almost as grievous a sin as what it was committing it to begin in the first place. We'll receive the judgment it deserves. Please, Adira. Let's end this. I... I... What if... What if she's right? I, I can't let this continue. But I don't like any of these choices in red. No. Our work here was everything this convent I gave it everything if mother Idolora was wrong then my whole life is meaningless please listen no 
I, uh... Silence! Dearest Mother Idolora, fill the cracks that sin has left upon me. Drowning me out with prayer? And paint a smile on my face so that I can become the woman of God that you want me to be. I'm used to that. So is Cornelia. Shut up! <laughs> she is... She's gone. <laughs> it's funny, dear. You kept wanting to see something. You have, and now you've taught to run her away. Has it passed? There's always that one moment. Oh, gosh. That one key moment where God calls stronger and more desperate than ever before. <gasps> It is these moments that truly separate the saints from the sinners. Who's... who's that? My dear Adira. My sweet, strong Adira. Oh, boy. Oh, fetch me? me. Oh, time really has ruined you, has... <gasps> Mother Idolora... You're here. How? Oh, child. I never left. I've been watching you all this time. All your struggles. Your pain. Your victories. And your failures. My failures? The girls, Gabriella, she, she tried to leave her. I had to do something, and Holly, the, the thing she was saying, I couldn't... Oh, Adira, look at you, rambling on again. You really haven't changed, have you? <laughs> when words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is... Is prudent. Chapter and verse. Pro Proverbs 1019. There you are. <laughs> Good to see you still remember. I was so worried. You've always had uh, difficulties when it came to the scriptures. By no means your fault. Your mind just has a tendency to wander, indulging itself with wasteful distractions. But we managed to fix that. It took some time, but we did, didn't we? Yes. Yes, we did. M Mother Edelora, what happened to Cornelia? What... what you did... It's not true, right? I mean, I know it wasn't true. The horrible things she said about you, you didn't, right? Oh, no, 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 Adira. It's worse than I thought. Is this what years without my guidance has done to you? Ah! Every waking moment is a moment we dedicate to prayer. Not just through our actions, but through our thoughts. And so, every thought which praises the divine is a blessed hymn, whilst every doubt, every idle musing... Every stray idea is what? I, I, is, is a curse, a sin, an indulgent distraction that the devil feeds upon. Chapter and verse. That's not a scripture! Uh, um, it, it's not from the Bible. It's, it's from you. <laughs> that it is. Yeah. Doesn't that seem a little weird, Adira? That she's equating her words to that of scripture. Something a saint I don't think would do. Now that we've cleared that up, we can start over the right way. <gasps> yes, Mother. Forgive me. I am graced with your presence. So, now we attend to the present. Looks like you've made quite the mess. 
Yes. I'm sorry. That's all right. When there's a mess, we clean it up. Simple as that. <sighs> clean it up? But... But how? If you look deep within yourself, Adira, I think we both know what needs to be done. Oh, gosh. The devil festers now more than ever in the hearts of the young. And our efforts in this glorious war against Satan himself... <sighs> lacking. You've always been so sweet. But right now... I need you to be strong, and don't you worry. Remember, I am mother to the Order, and a mother can be whatever her children need her to be. So, what do you need, child? I... I need you. I've, I've been alone for so long. Oh, sweet, strong Adira. You were never alone. <gasps> oh, jeez, there they are. My... My sisters. They're here for you, Adira. We're all here for you. They're all so creepy. It's... It's all so perfect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. You are forgiven. Now, let's turn those words into action. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. Oh, no. Yes. It's all clear to me now. We do things step by step. First, we assess the damage. Broken shards of her image scattered across the floor. We shall pick them up. They're sharp to the touch, nasty little edges that cut and hurt the maim. But that's all right. She's now guiding me. Second, we picture how it used to look. Yes, now I remember. We will put her back together. Grand grander than ever before. She will be perfect. She will be beautiful. Oh, and there's the candles. Yes, we'll need to light them. One for each of my dear sisters. And I have so many sisters. The convent will be bathed in brilliant, radiant flame. Third, we reflect. But there's no need to reflect anymore, after all. She's here. Now I need only listen. Which brings us to the final step. I will turn her words, our words, into action. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. We've gone a while. Okay, we're gonna stop here. Because now we know we're at the finale. The pieces are set. The, the board is... We're all gonna die. Oh, gosh darn it, this game. It's too in perspective. It's too real. I wonder, does this game actually have multiple endings or is it just a story? I don't really even know. We'll have to see. But regardless of that, it certainly is compelling, isn't it? That's me. So yeah, I don't know. I think the problem is, is that people will do so much evil in the name of good it can make it hard to just trust that people always want to be good. But like I said, like, this is like, like people who are caught up in these issues, these trials, like you got like the, the child abuse allegations and like realities that happen from clergymen. You have lies and cover ups. You have uh, crimes that are, are, are whitewashed or like buried because it would tarnish the image of the church. You know, like the, anytime you see that, you're like, obviously that's evil. That's wrong. But it's like the minority of a larger organization that does stand for good and right and tries to do things properly. And so it's like it's really hard to be a harsh judge. I know why people can get bitter and I can see why people will get very like anti-church, anti-religion. I don't necessarily think that's a like the right way. I do think that there is so much good that can come from religion. But like people can use religion like they can use money or political or political power. It can be abused. It can easily be abused. So give, give, put it in the hands of the right people. And they're going to take it for and run with it for the mile. They're going to go for everything they can. And they're going to try and justify it all because in their hearts, they are doing what's right because, you know, what they want is right. There's an evilness to there, an evil narcissism. And 
uh, sociopath, sociopathy, where you are willing to sacrifice the desires, needs, and ideas of others in order to further your own goals. But to justify it, you often have to work things through. So like either by feeling like you're the smarter one, you're the more pious one, you have the more understanding, you clearly have a better grasp of the full situation, and thus you can make the judge, jury, and executioner. Other people are too flawed to really understand your grand vision. It's really funny, too, because like that's also an attitude I think I see a lot in um, internet personalities. Like There are great, so many good ones. But then there's people who let it get to their head. There's people who like build a reputation off of lies and like uh, telling people what they want to hear and then using that to, to achieve their own ends. There are several people you can I, I can think of. I don't even want to name necessarily because people like like, like it's like I'm not one to, to be able to in a position to truly judge. But there are a lot of individuals out there, especially in like the the guru lifestyle alpha male or um or even like extremes and like things like feminism and such like feminism as a as a concept is really good and important for society but you can take it and you can make it something so toxic just like toxic masculinity and like all of that is just it's all wrong it's all taken so far and, and it really perverts what it was supposed to be like, it's one thing to want to help people. It's another to use your desire to help as a vehicle to do what you want. Because they're two completely different things. So, yeah. I don't know. Lots of food for thought for this one. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys, you all have something interesting to think about. I definitely think we're at the finale now. Adira versus Gabby and oh, Holly. But I don't know who's going to win. I don't know if we can win. It doesn't feel like we're in a good position to be able to do anything. So, yeah. Well, let's just see how this all plays out. Now that Deer has made her call. I was really hoping she'd come on side eventually, but I'm not sure she's going to be able to anymore. So, we'll have to see where this goes. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you're looking forward to next week, and hopefully you have a good weekend. And most importantly, that there's more stuff I can do to help bring entertainment, good stories, and just good thought processes and ultimately, you know, help us all get that critical thinking rolling. I, I, if there's anything I hope you walk away from from this channel, it's like that you enjoyed sharing these moments with me and that you have something to think about because really that's what these sto stories are all about. It's about helping us to really be introspective and think about things in ways we might never have considered before. So hopefully you get that and much more. So until the next video, watch me up and see me next. I'll see you there.